Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
A reading from the book of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Iphah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, assume that you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the wisdom of God and its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. And pay him homage. 
When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and mass. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. As the wise men on this day came to Jerusalem on their way to Bethlehem, so we now also go over to Jerusalem, where Dr. Richard Major is our guest preacher. Words from this evening's Gospel. Wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, you do not find us where you'd expect to find us this evening, in the hills at Bethlehem, creeping down to the mysterious grotto where Christ was born. Because of COVID, um, because of what is delicately called the security situation, Bethlehem is off limits this year. The Christmas town stands empty this Christmas tide. It has no pilgrims. As for us, you find us outside Jerusalem, sitting under an olive tree, looking at the western wall of the old city. Most of what you see here is Turkish work no more than 500 years old. But that hulking tower under the minaret is much older. It's all that survives of the palace of King Herod himself. In other words, you find us in the wrong place. And that's a good place to be because part of the point of this story is that on that first epiphany, the Magi too came to the wrong place. In this day, Herod's palace was quite a sight. There were guest quarters by the hundred with carved and gilded massive beams to take the breath away. The walls were frescoed. The furniture was mainly of gold and silver. There were porticos one after the other and artificial forests with long canals and bronze statues. And the point of all this Trumpian excess was to make people forget that Herod was a usurper and a tyrant. I suppose we'd have found it a bit gross, but the Magi were presumably children of their age, and in any case were themselves Eastern kings. They would have found it natural to be summoned to such a palace to discuss the birth of a royal child. They sat in that monstrous place just beyond us, paying courtesies to the wrong king. And the upshot was to be the famous mass murder of boy children. Eventually, Herod let them go and they rode on to Bethlehem, six miles away. They got in that same evening on Twelfth Night to the house where the right king was staying with his mother. The Magi would have noticed the contrast 
Bethlehem's a small village out of the way. I don't need to remind you of that. The whole tradition of Christmas art and devotion plays up how quiet the birth was, how private, how hidden. All through Christmas tide, we've been thinking and singing about the little town of Bethlehem lying still beneath the stars. Christ appears secretly in silence in the middle of the night. Only a few people see. That's the atmosphere of Christmas. Peace, awe, mystery, solitude. And now, at the culmination of the Christmas season, the Feast of Epiphany comes along and knocks all that to pieces. The word epiphany means manifestation, as we would say, publicity. When God appeared as man, it was a public event. There was a political earthquake. The three wise men, who seem intoxicatingly charming to us, weren't charming at the time but represented a national crisis. Herod was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. The authorities responded with massacre. Thus the Herodian regime was shaken and a few years later the Romans intervened because of this and similar atrocities and overthrew it. Twelfth Night is about God invading the world as its perpetual king. He comes, among other things, to throw down wicked government and corrupt culture and intellectual error. When the Magi, those great thinkers, rulers and astronomers, knelt down before the baby, they submitted to him on behalf of all of human authority and all human thought. Twelfth night is thus the opposite of Christmas Day. The 6th of January is violently different from the 25th of December because the church likes these violent contrasts in her worship. And it's a fair question for us. If Christmas and Epiphany represent such opposite ideas, which one is more true? How does Christ come to mankind? Christ gives himself to us quietly, again and again. That's how it is when you and I call him and he is with us. We say our prayers, we put out our hands for the Eucharist, and there, in unspeakable tenderness and privacy, God is with us. We are alone with Jesus and the world does not know. Your faith is a hidden place which no visiting kings ever find out. The silent night, holy night of Christmas is ours again and again, as long as we live. But Christ's coming cannot only be private. There's no such thing as separation of faith and the world. If we think faith's a private matter, we haven't understood it. The Christian gospel is the most public thing. Today is the feast of Christ's showing to the rulers, the thinkers and the artists and the financiers, to all the people who make our society. This is his epiphany to all of us, not only to our devotional side. Christ's coming demands the obedience of our entire lives. Can we reconcile, for instance, our political convictions, whether of the right or the left, to the fact of Bethlehem? Can we reconcile our cultural tastes? If we try to leave out those, then we're likely to find ourselves in the wrong place, paying court to the wrong king. The Magi didn't make the same mistake twice. Having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. And we too have been warned. The king of all things has arrived. That is why it is such a serious matter to do as the Magi did, to come to him in Bethlehem and to be overwhelmed with joy. In the name of the Father and of the Son.
Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Coming to worship the Savior with joy, with all our hearts and minds, let us make our prayer to our Heavenly Father. As the Magi worship your Son in the Savior of Bethlehem, grant that Christians everywhere in this holy season of Christmas time may be drawn to see you, know you, and adore you in the midst of your children, and in all places where you deign to be found. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
as an agile for gifts of gold to the Christ child. Let us pray for all possessed of wealth or power in this world, that they may offer them up to God by using them for the good of his children. Especially we pray for those who have the power to make war, or to maintain peace, or to build division or unity among the nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the Nazareth brought incense to Jesus, so we pray for the church and for all Christian people that the zeal of our worship, of our praise and thanksgiving, may be matched by the righteousness of our lives and may witness to your love in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. As the wise men, magi of the dead, so we pray for ourselves and one another, that we may continually put to death in ourselves all that keeps us in the love of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The Holy Family lived in exile and in the shadow of death. Father, look in mercy on all who are poor, powerless, or dispossessed. Comfort, succor, and strengthen refugees, those seeking asylum, and all who work to help them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Lord. prayer. Your son shared the life of his home and family in Nazareth. Father, holding your hand our neighbors, our families, and this faith community of which we are a part, that we may live together in peace and tranquility, bearing with one another in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Your son was born into a world which knows pain and disease and brought to peace and healing. Grant those blessings to all who now suffer in body and mind. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers in this place, whom we now remember in silence before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As children of Bethlehem died at the hands of King Herod and became the first to know death in the presence of your son, gather to your near presence all who have died. We pray especially for Maximilian Elsa, benefactor of this parish, whose anniversary of death falls at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we rejoice in our fellowship with the shepherds, the angels, the magi, St. Joseph, and the Blessed Virgin Mary. In your unfailing love for us and for all people, and in the communion of your saints, hear and answer our prayers through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins against God and against our neighbour. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace.
Welcome to St. John's in the Village, Manhattan. Those of you who are joining us on this, our webcast, liturgy on this Feast of the Epiphany. It's a great pleasure to have joining us from Jerusalem, this time Dr. Richard Major. It is a sadness that this year, Christian pilgrims are unable to go from Jerusalem to Bethlehem because of the restrictions put upon us by the virus. It's a great pleasure that Dr. Major will join us from the side of Herod's palace in Jerusalem. This coming Sunday is the first Sunday after the Epiphany and therefore is the baptism of our Lord. Eucharist here in church at the normal times of 8.30 and 11 a.m., both in person and also uh, live streamed. Following the latter of some Eucharist, we will make our way to the Hudson River for the traditional blessing of the waters on the feast of the baptism of our Lord. That blessing also will be live streamed on our YouTube channel. We hope you can join us for the blessing of the waters. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Bring offerings and come into his court.
to deliver us from the power of sin and death, and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favour upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed the good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in him. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves as a living sacrifice. Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your Spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation, the body of Christ, given for the world which you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Evangelist and all your saints, from every tribe and language and people and nation, to feast of the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honour, glory, and praise forever and ever. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of
let us pray. God of the nations, we thank you for nourishing us with this holy sacrament. Guide us by your presence that we may bring your light to those who dwell in darkness and establish your justice in the earth. Amen. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.